A new friend asked this question on my apples to apples to melons video. What happened to this project slash test? Was it abandoned? In that video I was using my mill to run each of the three alternator slash generators I've purchased over the past 15 years. The idea was to compare the power outputs from each of them while turning the input shaft at a reasonable or natural RPM. By natural I mean a probable RPM my stealth thought will spin at wind speeds varying from between 5 and 15 miles per hour. The stealth thought RPM guesstimations are based on my visual comparisons during actual wind events of the past few years of service. If someone would like me to compare another PMG against the three I've already purchased, please send it to me for a new comparison. So to answer the question, the test was completed, but choosing the most capable generator for the job is only one part of a much larger project. Now, friend, come along and I'll show you where it goes from there. She has some goals. Come here. Come on, watch your hand. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Hmm? Chase. This contraption is what I call a power pod. This particular version is not exactly what I had in mind, but it does have a couple of the basic elements of what I want. It has a stealth rod on top of a mast and a sun tracking solar array mounted to a portable supporting frame. But it doesn't have the tilting telescoping mast that is part of my original idea. Now I've been asked if I ever make drawings of uh, my projects. No, I never do. But I'm doing it this time for you guys. Um, this is a drawing of what I would like the power pod to be. This is not the way it is right now. Uh, the power pod is just, just very basic right now where it's just uh, the mass doesn't go up high enough to actually put the turbine in the wind and in this drawing I, I like you to see that I do intend it to go up about 20 feet uh, that's the 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 range of height I'd like to get on it but uh, more importantly this will fold down and go into a storm position where I can cover the turbine uh, with something and I can put maybe a, a piece of three-quarter inch plywood over the top of the solar panels so if we get these baseball size or softball size hailstones which happens in in Texas sometimes I guess it happens other places too but we see hailstorms every spring uh, when the peonies bloom you can count on a hailstorm to tear them up <laughs> and that's that's what usually happens so on, on this, the idea is when the uh, when the storms come in, the turbine can lay down, and I can cover that with something, and cover up the solar panel with something, and then whenever the storm has passed, I turn the the crank, and it pulls the the cable. And uh, well, my drawing's terrible. That's terrible. Turn the crank. It pulls the cable. The the mast sets back up again. We place a pin right here. This is the hinge point. That's the hinge point. You place a pin in here, and it locks it in the upright position again. And then. You keep turning the, the cable, turning the crank, and the cable pushes the turbine up to its highest limit, which, like I said, I'm shooting for about 20 feet. Um, you see that this, this moves out this way, and the solar panel 
is connected right here on the on the shaft and as as the mast goes up the solar panel gets back into its correct position as well the actuator is still right here so the idea is uh, when it goes once it's up in the in its correct position the solar panels contract the sun again but you want it to be flat when it goes this way now this is just the side angle if if I turned it where you were looking at the front or the back of it you'd see some other structure because there should be something here uh, to brace the side of each side of the panel solar panel whenever it's in this position to keep it from from rocking now like I said I make about fifty dollars a month on YouTube uh, so we're looking at if this was I'm hoping it doesn't cost this much but I'm just saying if this cost four thousand dollars at fifty dollars a month it's gonna be eighty months so that's uh, eight, eight, if this cost four thousand dollars it's going to end up cost uh, taking six point six six years to pay for so if you'd like to pitch in towards the project I sure would appreciate it now the the thing I'll be working on now the the part that I'll be working on right now is just the the shaft right here uh, it's going to be different than I've ever done it before and uh, it's going back to an idea that I had a long time ago playing with this idea of this style of turbine I was also uh, concerned about the friction in the bearings if you can eliminate the friction in the bearings then the thing will spin faster um, and in the model this model has magnets as bearings whereas that does not uh, so the the weight of the turbine it's not only this way when the wind blows, or of course that changes as the direction of the wind changes, but the, the consistent weight is straight down. And I can do something about that using magnets as bearings. This one uses speaker magnets. You have one speaker magnet here, and one right here and they oppose each other. The bearing the the magnets on the bottom take the place of a thrust bearing. Now years ago when I first started playing with this idea I was using um, the wind blue PMA uses the uh, one good bearing in the front and then there's a cup bearing in the back which means that all the weight from the turbine rests on the shaft and that front bearing so the idea was to mount a plate over the top of the body of that and it would hold a neodymium magnet and the other magnet would be on the bottom of the tube that uh, that was attached to the shaft and in that way it would very much resemble the model over there but the problem is the RPM needed for this particular uh, PMA was not going to be increased enough by eliminating the friction to make it worthwhile so I've been waiting for an opportunity to try this again.
this is what I call a stick. Uh, this sits on the very top of the telescoping mast of the power pod. So on, on this you've got, this is solidly put together. It's got a few different parts but it's no moving parts. You got the steel tube that sits over the top of the, the mast. Uh, there'll be screws in it to attach it to the mast. You got uh, this is an aluminum section here. This aluminum section that fits tightly in the top of this tube has a stainless steel shaft that goes up. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, uh, but it's got to be tall enough for the for the tube for the the vault to slide over. Uh, inside this you got the, the stainless steel and then there's a, a nut on the bottom. This this is going to be turned down see, like right in here somewhere. This is going to be turned down to 5 8 inch diameter and then when I tighten up the lock nut that's down here it'll it'll hold it down inside this socket basically what it is. Now the socket doesn't just hold the stainless steel shaft. Uh, the so the, this also holds a magnet. And this magnet is going to oppose this magnet. And when this is slid down over the top of the shaft you have a bearing right here and you have a tapered bearing up here. This, the tapered bearing is so you can tighten it and draw it down. And this is a four inch pulley. So when this comes over and it sits on this, you've got the, the magnet right above. you got one magnet right above the other and they oppose each other and it forces the tube up. And that space between there, that is a thrust bearing. Or that's my version of a magnetic thrust bearing. It's not my version. I'm sure it's been around for a while. Uh, I was playing with stuff like this when I was just a little bitty kid. And I imagine there's been an awful lot of people do that too. So this is not a new thing. I just want to put it into use on this product. Here's another drawing. Um, shows a little bit different detail. Of course the, the top of the drawing is cut off because this is actual size. You got the, um, the plate that the blades mount to is going to be slightly bigger and that uh, actually makes the turbine wider. The turb you know, and the turbine will also, you know, this is one of the original blades. The turbine's going to have a, the blade is going to come down another foot. So that will actually put the generator more in the middle of the turbine rather than directly underneath it. And, let's see, it's a four inch pulley and then whatever whatever generator you have to attach to it is going to have a two inch pulley. Uh, this is an example of the Freedom 2 on a stick. And uh, this would be the Freedom PMG on a stick. And then you've got the uh, this would be a, the Wind Blue or any other alternator style uh, PMA on a stick and the I've got my magnets here so you got a magnet that's on the, the bottom part and there's a, a magnet inside the pulley so I want to embed that in there a little bit and the only thing you know this is experimental this you know if somebody wants to pay me to build them one I'll do it but this is an experiment that's something I've been thinking about for a very 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 long time but the, my concern is, you know, you've got magnets whirling around inside the PMA, the generator. You have magnets over here. So I'm 
kind of concerned about the magnetic fields interfering with each other. The possibility of the magnets in here demagnetizing over here. I don't think these would demagnetize the ones in here because these are positive, negative, positive, negative every other one and these are just positive, negative to each other. You know, they, they'll push against each other. It doesn't change as it turns around, but the, these do. And that's how you demagnetize magnets is by changing the uh, positive, negative a lot. And it takes away the magnetism or neutralizes the magnetism of a magnet. So I may experiment with putting that down even lower and making the uh, making this nut a little bit longer. I think I want to make these out of stainless steel just like I did on the uh, original tubes. Um, of course it's got teeth on there to handle a flat belt. And the belts I intend to use on this are similar to this and this is actually see if you can see the grooves grooves in that this is a belt from a treadmill and I think it's about the about the right size for this as well these are are pretty tough pretty tough I don't know uh, how weather resistant they are but um, that's part of the idea of having the having the the mast where it will come down and fold over so it's easy maintenance to change out things like the belt just sold a turntable made 40 bucks uh, remember anything that I repair and put in the in the newsstand was repaired at the little shop so uh, things like the china cabinet are for sale uh, and you can look in, in the uh, sewing machine here these are for sale those were repaired in the little shop uh, but they're for sale in the Andrews newsstand and you can see how I did the repair work on those two pieces matter of fact I even built that little system right there on the come by and Soros channel which is uh, the Andrews newsstand channel took three months but it looks like I have a little something to play with get ready to buy some stuff uh, do you like my little uh, log cradle and dry erase easel if you want to see how I made it all you gotta do is check out my personal channel it's in the links right over here Thanks.